everyone, um, welcome back to Matilda Makes. Today I'm going to be making a dress I've designed. Um, I really wanted a kind of winter, well, or more autumn, spring, winter dress, I suppose. Um, and I had the perfect fabric in my stash that I've had for years that really needed using. So I've kind of designed a dress so I can use that fabric up. Um, but this dress could also be made in a um, light cotton or a linen or anything you like. So it could also be a summer dress. I'm using more of a heavy, I think it's like a wool blend fabric. I'll show you what I'm going to be using. So here is the main fabric I'm going to be using. It's this beautiful green, heavy, um, but not too thick. Um, green fabric so that will make up the main body of the dress and then I have this cotton uh, white cotton lawn so that will be the lining um, I also will, will need zips so I have a I think this will probably be too long it's better to get a longer one that you can kind of sew off and cut rather than getting one that's too short. So I think this is a 20 inch or an 18 inch zip. Um, the colour is horrible and does not match, as you can see, this lovely green at all. Yeah, it's not a nice colour. So um, that's what we'll need today and um, as well as the pattern that you will have downloaded and put to, printed off at home and put together. Um, I think with this make I'm going to, it's not going to be a one day make by any stretch of the imagination so I'm going to really take my time with it because I want to make something that I can have forever. Um, so you might learn a few techniques, it might be different how I've done things in the past, um, but yeah bear with me. Um, I'm not actually sure how this one's going to turn out really. Um, hopefully it'll be nice. <laughs> so let's see. Okay so the first thing we're going to do with your fabric is to, to thread mark the pattern onto the wrong side of my fabric and it's good to thread mark the fabric before you go because it just makes the construction so much better and easier and I know that this part is a pain and I quite dislike doing it and I'm sure anyone who's done it in the past agrees it's really tedious and boring but you know it doesn't take that long and once you've done it you'll be happy you have. So here's my paper pattern that I've printed off um, and already stuck together. Now I haven't put a seam allowance on and that's because we're going to be thread tacking it. If you don't want to thread tack, if this for you is just going to be a quick project, um, you will need to trace the pattern out first and add your seam allowance. Um, I also haven't made the digital pattern for the facing yet so I'll just make one as we're going along. So you're still going to have to try and line it up with the um, salvage edge but keep in mind that you're going to have to flip the pattern once you've thread traced it and leave enough space for seam allowance. Don't forget adding your seam allowance space. Um, um, I pressed in a centrefold line um, which will make it easier for lining up the centre front of my pattern. So I'm going to do this side first actually because it's closest to me. And we're going to pin, pin it down. And bearing in mind our seam allowances. So it should go around there where my pins so they back in here so you just pin down on that edge
What you really want for thread tracing is a cotton thread and it's, it's, but it's not very strong so it just snaps and that's really good for, for thread tracing because if you have something you can't get out you could just snap it or it snaps off and you can easily remove it from the fabric. Okay, so I'm going to start on the centre front line and try and get as close to that side seam as I can. Um, the stitches could just kind of need to be of an average size, not too big, but not too small either. Um, probably around, let's see, like half a centimetre. Just an even running stitch is basically what we're doing. Okay, so um, it's a little bit later on in the day and as you can see here, or maybe not, I have finished all of the thread tracing, all of the bits, it looks a bit messy. Yeah, so here you can see all of the thread tracing and now we're going to start cutting out. Hi, so we're back for day two. Um, I left yesterday with everything cut out and marked up and ready to start sewing together. We're going to start on the darts by pinning and tacking those in place first. We're going to hand tack them just so the darts are really precise and stay in the right place. So this is where the having tacked the outline of the pattern is really useful. It means you can really see where everything lines up and makes it so easy to put everything together. The other reason why hand tacking this before I sew is going to be a good idea is that it's a thick material and going through the sewing machine it will just be a lot easier things won't move around as much okay so for the tacking i'm going to start i think from the very top take out my pin but keep holding this together and make sure that i go through the whole thickness of the fabric so let's replace that one. Okay. And with tacking, what you want to do is a um, a long stitch followed by a short stitch followed by a long stitch, and so on and so forth. Okay. And at the end, I'm just going to go once back on myself loosely so that I can get it undone when I need to and this one I am going to trim off. So there we go that's tacked in place. I've just been filming for what I thought was a long time and it turns out I hadn't actually pressed record. So I've got a little bit further um, so I've done the side seams, I've done the darts, um, and I was about to do the shoulders, and then I, before I did the shoulders, I just decided to put in a little um, stay tape around the neckline. Um, it does, you can't see it on the front, on the right side of the fabric. Um, it's just lightly sewn in um, on the wrong side of the fabric just so that that neckline doesn't move anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to now cut that neckline out. I'm not as worried about the back neckline because as you can see it's not as deep that curve so it shouldn't stretch. So now I can tack up 
the oh so many threads everywhere I can tack up the shoulder seams so I'll do that first by pinning them in the right place pinned up so I'm doing one big stitch and then a small stitch so there we go that's our so tacked together shoulder seam so you can see where it all is so, okay um so I just tried it on so I could see where I need adjustments. I need to take a little bit off on the side seams and a little bit off on the centre back. Now what I'll do is undo the, the tacking and restitch the lines of where I want everything to be. Okay, so I just finished um, remarking my thread tracing. I hope you can see that. Here's the line that we started with, and then here's the adjustment line. And on the centre back, it's quite extreme. So um, here's the original line all the way down in a straight line, and my back is very curved. So um, on trying it on and um, fitting it properly it needs to kind of start coming in around here gently for a little sweep and then back out. Um, yours might look different from mine, it might go the opposite way or you might have more that you need to take out from higher up even, um, but that's why it's also handy to do this thread tracing and tacking stage so you can really get a proper fit and if you have the right fit then you're more likely to um, have this garment for a longer time and wear it more often and that's what we want really. So I'm going to once again tack this all up try it on, make sure it's all perfect before moving on to the next step. Okay, so I'm back. Um, I tacked it up for the final time, did a try on and it fits perfectly now. So we're going to take um, some of it apart now and then we can um, find properly sew down the darts um, and that's the next step so let's take out these tacks on the shoulders and the side seams because we already tacked everything um, we just need to stitch it up and it's quite easy so here it is thread tracings because um, we don't need them anymore. Press the seams to the front, the side seams and the um, and also the shoulder seams pressed to the front. Okay I'll be back in a minute. Okay so just finished pressing. I also used my um, tailor's ham on the shoulders just with some quite a lot of steam and um, I can't remember what this 
things cooled um, but and then lightly pressing with this just to create a nice rounded shoulder and also I use this whenever I'm pressing seams and darts or anything really um, because it gives a really nice finish if you can see he just kind of lay it on top like so and yeah it just um, having this wooden flat wooden block it um, absorbs some of the heat and cools down the fabric after you've pressed it helping set the um, seam in place um, so if you can get one of these it just really makes a difference to your pressing and pressing is key to making something look nice <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is um, make the seams trim them to a decent size and then I don't want to trim them too much because again with making your own clothes means that you can then adjust them to fit you if you put on weight or lose weight I'm probably more likely to put on weight than lose weight at the moment so um, I'll keep them as kind of big as I can in order to for that to be okay but I'm just going to then finish them with a whipping stitch. It's day three um, and today we're picking up where we left off so okay we've just finished overcasting with a whip stitch the seam allowance so I went ahead and put on the neck the neck line and the one of the arm facings. Um, I'm going to show you how to put on the other arm facing. So, so you're going to put the right sides of the fabric together and line am I doing this right? Yeah, and line them up and pin them. So now that's all pinned so you can see. Um, we're now going to thread, tra uh, not thread trace, sorry, tack that in place. And by tacking it in place, we just make sure that whilst we're sewing on the machine, it's not moving at all. So we've, we've sewn all of that together, we're now going to take off our um, tacking and our thread tracing from the arm. Okay, so all of our thread tracings are out and tackings are down there. Um, so now you see the kind of seam allowances on our facing and on our neckline. We want to just trim those back so that they don't bulk up our arm and too much and you do the same on the neckline as well. On the seam allowance of the arm side and again do this with the neckline is to um, clip little triangles out to create spacing in order for our round edge to sit nicely. So you just clip like this. We have our snipped edge. So, And our next thing we're going to do is to stitch, uh, stay stitch, um, the seam facing seam allowance and the arm seam allowance to the facing and we're going to stitch in the ditch here. Um, so what you want to do is press all of your seam allowance um, and your facing in the same direction. So here's the body of the bodice, here's the back of the bodice and my facing and seam allowances are going to go away from there and I'm going to sew in this little ditch here. So 
So now I can go and iron it so that it all goes to the back like so. So I'll be pressing it like that. Okay, so that's the facings put on. So now I'm going to join the skirt um, to the bodice. Um, so I'm going to do that by laying the bodice upside down with the neck, the neck facing towards me with the right side of the bodice facing up and then oh, shimmy this under out of the way I'm then going to lie um, the right side of the skirt on top of the right side of the bodice and line up those centre fronts and pin them in the right place. Okay, so those centre fronts are matching and then I'm going to get my side seams and match the side seams up and pin them in place. You really want to get them as exact as you can because it's going to look so much better if you do. If they're slightly off, it's fine, but it's just not going to look as nice and we're really making an effort with this one. Great, okay, got some nicely pinned. Let's get our tacking thread. Okay, now we're ready to tack it together. Okay, so let's sew this together. Okay, so we pressed that and it's looking really lovely. As you can see, the seams are matching up and it's all coming together. So the next step that we're going to do is construct the lining. Okay, so all our lining pieces are um, are done. <laughs> Couldn't think of the word then. So um, let's attach them together. So because we have been uh, French seaming it and we'll continue to do that for the joining here, what we need to do is put them first wrong sides together. Um, so have the top bodice lining the um, right side facing you. We've got our the main body of our dress and we're going to we're going to put this this way. Everything facing inside. What we're going to do then take the lining on the inside and attach it to the facing. Just like so. And where we can't reach, we will have to think of something else. Okay, so there we have it. It's all a bit tangly at the moment. Um, but it will go like that eventually. Um, so first we we'll need to sew all that together. Let's turn that 
all in on its south then. Oh, this way. Okay. So as you can see now we've got our two um our two arms with our facing and our lining attached. And now we want to do the same or a similar thing with the neckline. Um, so many threads everywhere. So what we're going to do is turn it iron on itself again and pin the centre front to the centre front. And we're just going to have to keep kind of pulling it all through until it all matches up. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Basically, the dress has gone into these strappy armhole bits. And this is our front facing here, and that's what we're going to be sewing. <sighs> Breathe again. So basically we've sewn the lining the wrong, the right sides together with the main body of the dress um, and to do that we've had to pull the dress into this kind of weird shape but now, fingers crossed, this should all pull back out. Yeah, and then voila, we've got a really nice lining and facings. So we've got our, if you can see, our lining in here with all of the facing. Magic. Um, so I'm going to go and press that. Good morning, we're now on day four. Might not be morning for you, but it's morning here. Um, yeah, day four and I'm going to today be putting in my zip. I did show you, I did have another, I did have another zip, but I just can't face putting this garish green zip in. So I found in my stash somewhere, luckily this white zip. I'm going to also be totally hand stitching the zip in but you obviously don't have to do that you can do your zip however you like um, okay so we're going to start by um, sewing together or basting sorry basting stitching the um, the tack line the thread traced line, sorry, of the dress. Um, so we're just going to baste it all together. So we'll pin it first. And I'm not going to baste the lining yet. I'm going to leave the lining as a separate thing at the moment. Okay, so I've um, tacked up the back seam. Um, I'm now going to press it completely open like so, so as you can see I have my seam pressed open and I'm now going to take my zip and I'm going to place um, it on top of my seam so that where the middle of the seam is, the very middle where it joins, which is our centre back, I'm going to place the um, zip directly on top of that so that the opening of the zip is on top of that centre back line and I'm going to position it with my zip all the way up at, at, as close to the top 
as I can get. Maybe actually, so the head of the zip, the zipper is about mm, half a centimeter from the top. That way we can add in a um, hook and eye to keep it tight together. And I'm just going to start pinning it on. Um, so I'm going to baste this and then I'll show you how it looks once I've basted. Okay, so that's all been tacked up, as you can see here on the front, on the back, sorry. Um, so it's nice, insecure, secure and in place. So now we need to turn it back over. I was just turning it in the right way so I could show you. So let's turn it back over to this side. And now we're going to get our nice thread um, and needle and I'm going to sew with a back stitch um, this in place. Or if you're doing this and on a thinner th fabric then you might want to just use a prick stitch and, and do a little, um, you might also want to do it from this side in that case so you can see the, the right side of the fabric so you can see just how big and far apart those stitches are. So I finished um, the hand stitching of the zip. I so our next step is going to be to now machine sew um, our seam together from the hem up to as close to the zip as we can get but don't, don't go too far, it's fine to have a little open, um, an open edge. So that's done and now we're going to start pinning also our lining to the zip. Okay so I'm going to finish pinning my lining on like so to the zip um, and then I'm going to hand stitch it down and once I've done that I'll come back and we're going to start the trim. Okay so I've finally finished um, putting in the zip um, as well as attaching the zip lining um, and fixing hand stitching the, the top facing so that it's all nice and neat. I think it's looking really great. So now what we're going to do is make the frill, calling it frill I guess, because um, I don't know what else to call it, that goes around the bottom of the skirt. Um, so I'm just first going to fold this up and put it to one side and bring out my strips. Um, so I'm going to sew these together um, on the on the machine, sew these together like this on the sewing machine and then I'm going to come back and show you what to do next. Okay so now that I've attached the um, the frill, the main fabric frill parts together, I'm now um, attaching the lining frill part to the main fabric frill part um, and I'm doing that by putting the right sides together and first sewing along one edge with the edges touching and then I'll go back and sew the other edge exactly the same way which will make and then I'll turn it in the right way like a um, like a strap or something like that Okay, 
so here I have the nice pressed um, strip of um, fabric that we're going to use to make the frill um, along the bottom of the dress. So what we need to do now is hand sew two rows of gathering stitch um, along the top edge. Okay, before I go any further, I kind of forgot to turn the camera back on. Um, basically, once I gathered all of this up, I'm now starting to pin it in place onto the hem of the dress. Um, and I'm just taking my time to space everything out properly and make sure it's all in the right place. Good morning, it is now day five um, and I think, I'm hoping it will all be finished today. Um, so last night, or yes, yeah, late afternoon yesterday, I finished off tacking the frill onto the skirt and it looks like this. I'm now ready to properly sew the gatherings on to the bottom and um, onto the hem and for this I'm going to use it's not the color match but I'm going to use this really strong thread because um, this the way I'm attaching this is going to leave it quite weak and open to be pulled off and I d uh, and sat on and you know all that kind of stuff so I want to make sure it's not going to come apart especially as we've got to hand sew it on. If you're doing a, um, if you're making the dress in a lighter fabric for summer then you could just machine sew the gatherings on. So um, now I'm going to, I've pinned on this um, ribbon onto the lining and the edge of the, the hem of the skirt covering the frill where the frill joins and I'm going to hand stitch it down to the lining and the, the dress. I'm going to do that now. So I finished um, attaching the ribbon inside, so the dress is done really. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is one, take out, I already started, to take out these um, thread tracings down the centre front because we don't need those anymore. Um, and then the very last step, I'm just going to put, hand sew in a um, hook and eye fastening at the top so that that closes nicely. I expect you all know how to do that. Um, so I'm going to stop the filming here um, and I'll show you what it looks like on. achievement as it was very long. Um, I'm really happy with this dress. I think it ticks all the boxes of what I was looking for. It's nice and warm. I like the way it feels, the way it moves um, and I can definitely style it in lots of different ways. I like to have something underneath covering my arms but I'm, I totally could also wear it with nothing underneath. I really hope that you decide to buy the pattern from my website which is linked down below and make the dress for yourself. Um, I'd love to see the different fabrics 
and style choices you make for your dress. And if you do make the dress, remember to upload a picture of you wearing it um, to Instagram and tag me in it, because I'd really love to see those. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd like me to make anything specific next time. I'll try and do my best. And yeah, that's it. See you next time.